If we ever needed help from the Lord, we need it right now. Is it all right if I preach tonight? So this particular uh, dynamic got kind of inside my brain for a long time. And I began to think about it. What a tremendously bold thing to do. And they went and said to Jonah that that's what they were going to do. They were going to just talk to God and see if God in some way would repent. Repent of what he was going to do. And here, you already know the rest of the story, but you could read this little small book in the Old Testament and kind of miss some stuff in here. I know when I went back to read it and I thought, isn't that really interesting? And the leadership of this dynamic culture said, well, well, we just maybe, verse number nine, who can tell? Who can really tell if God will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger? It's possible. And God saw their works that they turned from their evil way and God repented. He did repent of the evil, not their evil, of course, that he had said that he would do unto them. He did it not. Now, quite frankly, is that the way God operates? Well, I don't know how to tell you what God uh, does or is going to do or could do or how he operates or that sort of thing, but I do know here is one case, one, one interesting example that God was so touched by someone said, to him, probably through prayer or in a session, as we can see from this little short book, we don't get the whole story really um, uh, given to us just in, 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 in a very thorough way. But we do know this, that they talked to God and God was affected. Of course, Jonah did not like the idea, which comes to us as a challenging aspect we need a world that will repent and we know that it is possible that God could repent of the concept of judgment in a particular or in some way that God could say I heard you. Now, this was not God compromising with sin, if you read this very carefully. It is God not saying to anybody that it's all right to be corrupt and it's all right to have this whole culture that's full of sin and ungodliness that we couldn't even talk about here from the Bible. You just, you just let it go, but there it was. But it wasn't that God was approving. What was God doing? He was thinking that I have placed a judgment on this particular place. I've, I've, but I'm willing to repent of it. Do you realize, in other words, let's, the word repent here kind of bothers us a little bit because we think of God repenting in some way. He wasn't repenting of something he had done that was evil, but he was repenting of a judgment. He reversed himself. God reversed himself. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, we are dealing with something that is very powerful here. And the more you think about it, the more you just allow your brain to think about, wow, what a wonderful God this was. What kind of God is it that some, in some context and in some way, aren't you glad that you found the joy and the peace of the Holy Ghost and that you've got a relationship with the Almighty God. He's filled you with His Spirit and He's a God that will forgive you and help you and He's a God that will look at your case and He will readjust it if He has to and if you approach God in the right way and in the right spirit, how exciting things could get in my life, in your life, in our church, in our community, in our world, in our America. If we would say, God, how about it? If we just just got to the meeting tonight and we raised our hands and asked you to repent 
or to move back or to shove away or to change or to alter the course that you had set for us. Could you just change this dynamic here, God? Could you reverse yourself? Could you decide that if we would pray and get right, could you fix us? Could you turn this into a victory? And God said, yes, I'll do that. I, I will cover you. I'll put a blessing on you. I'll help you. I wish we could get some people to know that all things that you see in this city, the ugliness, the perversions, the wickedness, and just think, Sister Mooney and I, sometimes we just look at young people and people going around, and I know that fashion and things change over uh, time and culture, but you also see, as I mentioned a little bit today, Mickey, in the eyes of so many of these people, and young people particularly, that just, it's the way they dress, the way where they act and you think, oh my, they're headed toward darkness and trouble because we know that sin destroys you. It does. Sin's a bad thing. The soul that sins shall surely die. Adultery is not a good thing. Perversion is not a good thing. Lying is not a good thing. Huh? A thief is not living a good life. And jealousy and all those kind of inner things that are working in our hearts. But here's the good news that I want to get to you tonight. And there may be, there may be a Jonah around that doesn't quite understand this. But he did get a new revelation about this. He did begin to rethink it for himself because he realized that everybody needs some grace. A wonderful grace. God's grace is a good thing. And we've got a God that will look down upon your situation and say, maybe we can take another look at this. And just a little time at the altar. Altar, and if you can find a place to pray and if you can find a place to just yield yourself and if you will lift up your voice and say God would you fix this for me we got a fixer in the house and who can say God could you just turn this around we've got a God that can turn you around he can make a difference in your life he can set you on a high road take you out of the gutter take you out of the pain and suffering he can get people out of the bar he can loosen he can loosen somebody that's tied in knots as it were but God can reach down and make a difference in somebody's life do you realize there are thousands of addicts in our community thousands of them are in terrible terrible trouble because of marijuana and ter terrible I don't want to talk about all the different kinds of stuff but you know it's there but we've got a God that forgives and a God that would listen to the cry a God that would turn your life around my life around have you ever been discouraged have you ever just got a little weary with something or something this or that or some other thing and you just needed help from God well the good news is he is a helper and what a friend we have in Jesus all our sins and grief to bear and what a privilege to care. I need a little help, God. I need a fresh touch. I need to talk to you, maybe. I, I'm glad you sent, oh, I'm glad you sent Jaja. I'm glad he came. I'm glad he preached, and I'm glad that he warned us. going to be destroyed. Hold it now, but there was one, one strange leader, strange president, strange politician. That's right. It's in the Bible. He said, I think I'll go talk to this God. Oh, that's a good thing, Brother Kilman. Maybe we ought to talk to Maybe you and I ought to talk to God and say, we need to fix our attitudes. We need to re-examine what we are becoming. Take a look at your direction. Now, 
I like to sightsee when we're on the road. And I'm always going down roads that are not on the map. And if, if, if I didn't have Mickey, it would take me somewhere about 12 hours to get to Louisville. Because I love just kind of getting free from, you know, all the regular roads. But when I get so messed up, Sister Moon, now she's interesting. Uh, she has a sense of direction. And if she says she's going west, don't even bother to argue. I don't know about your wife. Maybe you don't argue with your wife too much anyway. Neither do I. But especially about the direction. She said, you're going the wrong direction. I said, no, I'm not. She says, yes, you are. We passed this fruit store right up there, or the grocery store, rather. We passed it three times already. I think you're going the wrong. Well, I said, maybe they got two of those stores. She said, no, in this town of 15,000, there's only one store, and you're going past it two times. What a friend we have in God. And here's what my challenge is for you tonight. It's not a very complicated sermon. I don't want to preach too long either. But I want us to start thinking something very powerful that this great Old Testament prophet, so to speak, had to find out that God could say, I'm going to repent or reverse or change what I had in mind. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to give you something called mercy and grace. I'm going to give you something called forgiveness. That's what we talked about a little bit this morning. Aren't you glad you made it to the cross? Amen. Sing it again now. Hallelujah. Just kind of stay with me because I may sing a hundred songs before we're finished. What was we singing right there? What a friend. Is he your friend? You know what he's done for you? Do you know what he's done for you? Do you know what he's done for you? We don't even want to talk to you what God has done for you. It's just an amazing thing. What a friend we have in Jesus. Joshua had to just go ahead and sing. Joshua had to go. He had to get by himself for a while. What is this? This is Joshua. This is Joshua now. Let's keep singing. So Joshua, he, he doesn't know what to do. He gets upset. He gets really upset. And so... He goes out and he huffs and he puffs. And he goes, could we say he kind of goes out in the desert or someplace? I don't know. And he's really upset. Go ahead, sing now. I'm sorry. Am I, I know you think I'm a little crazy. I want you to feel something with me. something about our God that maybe I know that you know it but somehow we we need to think about it and 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 this prophet what was his name now huh Jonah did I say Joshua well, no. Jonah 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 so he went out he went out somewhere I can't remember where'd he go desert someplace and he's gone. What kind of God? You know, I've come here. I've been here 40 days. I told him he's going to get wiped out. Was he out in the desert or someplace? And I, I don't, I don't, I guess he didn't, he didn't have things together some way. And, and he needed shelter. He needed comfort. God was not only dealing with this breakdown culture he was also dealing with a breaking down preacher or we might say kind of a, a preacher that was out of touch with what God wanted to do do you realize that a church a church like Calvary a preacher like me and all these other preachers you can get tangled up in your emotions about this or that and all of you young men and women Calvary young men and all of you IBC students you can kind of get twisted up about preaching and what it means and about saying we need to live right and walk right and all of that and it's true but don't forget that we have a God that ultimately is going to be merciful to us at the end of the day God is
is always listening very carefully at our prayers because he is the redeemer and the savior and he is the forgiver of sins and we've got evidence here in this old testament book that there are times when god will repent of his earlier of his earlier particular evaluation he f- sees something else but when jonah found it out he was not very happy he wasn't very joyous and so somewhere he was sitting around and let's see what happened there can anybody tell me he was um, he was how did he say it so jonah went out of the city and he sat on the east side of the city and he made him a booth and he sat under it in the shadow till he might see what would come of the city he, he's not he's he's already heard this this tremendous feeling that's developed now in the culture and the culture's thinking wow this this message that this preacher came and gave us has been reversed something's happening here god is speaking to us you may not know this but there's a lot of people, and I don't want to. I, I don't want to uh, uh, put this in a context that sounds kind of hateful. Or, but let me just say it one time. I won't, I won't bear on it too much. But, but just the people that are high tonight and drunk tonight and mixed up tonight and hurt tonight and trying to put a family together that's been broken in a thousand pieces and all kinds of godless things that have happened in their life. And they're trying to figure it all out and how to work it through. How to deal with it. Isn't it good that God can step into our life? And there's old, there's old Jonah. And he's out there trying to deal with grace and mercy. And I see, what did the Bible say? He got, um, it came to pass and he wanted to die and the Lord looked down and saw him and the Bible says in verse 6 that the Lord God prepared a gourd and made it to come over Jonah that it that it might shadow over his head to deliver him from his what? grief so Jonah was exceedingly glad of the gourd But God prepared a worm when the morning rose the next day and it smote the gourd and it withered. We got a gourd and now we got worms. And it came to pass when the sun did rise that God prepared a venomous east wind and the sun beat upon the head of Jonah and he fainted and he wished in himself to die and said, It's better for me to die than to live. This is a a preacher that's just gone to the end of his rope. He traveled. He preached. He made the word of God clear to the people. But he did not have a rich understanding of what God actually could do and reversing the consequences of the human soul and the human mind and the human life. It's possible for us to be in a church without really functioning properly as to God's power and God's grace and God's desire to push back, to open up a way, to love those that seem unlovable, to make a way for those who have no way, and lives that can be healed and fixed even though they are completely tortured lives we are surrounded in this community all across the city weak souls that have lost them lost their way that are confused that are in the depths of sorrow and trouble and Joshua doesn't know he doesn't he doesn't Jonah rather doesn't know how to deal with all of this and he goes out and he sits out by himself somewhere and he needs a little protection And God saw him in that state. And the Bible says that God placed a gourd there. 
over him to protect him outside somewhere in a miserable place, no doubt. And God prepared a worm. And when the morning rose the next day and it smote the gourd and it withered and it came to pass that when the sun did rise that God prepared a venomous west wind and the sun beat upon the head of Jonah that he fainted and wished himself to die and said, it's better for me to die. It is not better for our church to lose sight of its message. It's not better for us to get way past the message of deliverance oh what a difference if we will preach Acts 238 if we'll stay in that prayer room if we believe that God is a forgiving God we can come at any particular time to our cities to Indianapolis to any place in the world and say let us tell you this it is true that the soul that sinneth shall surely die and it is true that there will be a judgment day someday but if you will just call on the name of the Lord but See, Jonah couldn't get it all. I know we've been telling the story. All of you have heard the story. But I just wanted to, I, I, never, I never have preached about Jonah. because Everybody knows the story. But it's just like, I needed to preach tonight. It's like, am I making any sense so far? So now here's Jonah. And he is now examined by God. And it's kind of in tone. It's a tone. If you read it carefully, it's, a, it's, it's got a tone to it, doesn't it? And he says, Jonah. You should be angry for the gourd. What else? He says, I do well to be angry even unto death. Yeah. Then the Lord said, thou hast had pity on the gourd for the which thou hast not labored. Yeah. Neither madest it grow. Look, I gave you a gourd. I, I, I'm, I saved your life with this gourd. I gave you protection. Where did you get that? How did you get that? Because I gave it to you. You didn't earn it. You didn't plant that gourd. Is that what this is all about? You didn't even know how you were going to get through the night. So here comes the message, Calvary. Listen to me, please, carefully. And I mean this just as a warning to myself and to you. Churches, people, preachers, people, people that go to church, they can get all mixed up as to how vital God's mercy and God's grace is. Here is a man that comes. He comes a long way. He comes to preach. He casts the word to this very vile particular city and says it's going to be destroyed in 40 days. But he learns that some, in some way a message has changed the dynamic. And he goes out probably in some spirit of bitterness. And he's protected and made warm by a gourd. Then a worm was made by God and took away his gourd. It's all just kind of messed up, isn't it? But God has to talk to this man. Because what God gave to these people was the same thing he gave to Jonah. Something none of us have deserved. It's all grace, all mercy, all redemption, all salvation. Every one of us in this place are living for God because God called us and God picked us up and God made a way and God blessed us. And so you, Jonah, you should take very careful look at this because you need to be angry at the gourd. He said, I do well to be angry even unto death, he said. Then the Lord said, thou hast pity on me. For that which has not labored and neither madest it grow, it's not, you didn't have anything to do with it. Do you realize, ladies and gentlemen, that all of us are in the church because Christ found us and he took us to the altar. He guided us. So when you move down the street, Brother Pastor Mooney, and you see the desperate souls of addiction and 
problems. And when you hear of people, even people that have been in the church and backsliding and all that, when you see it all, don't forget that none of us would be here if it had not been for God's grace. And what else could the people of Nineveh do except call out to God and said, could you just maybe reverse this? Could you just turn this back? And God actually thought it was a good idea for him to change his mind. Can God really do that? That's my question. Can God repent? The Bible says he repented. He reversed it. It doesn't mean that God per, per, he, he, he did something that was sinful. He didn't do anything sinful. He didn't repent of sins. He, he had no sin. But he did make a way. What a friend we had in Jesus. So students, let me say on this first night here at IBC, you get this little story and you get the real message God is going to save people he's going to touch people he's going to touch lives and he's going to use you but don't ever think that you can make it through self-righteousness or through your own power your own talents all of us need grace and God will pull back even though we're worthy if we just took a look at ourselves mostly every punishment that could come into our life probably you could say well I had it coming have you ever had a relationship with somebody maybe your wife or husband or something and everything just kind of blows up and you have to end up saying man it was my fault I, I, I really messed it up and that's what, that's what this little town needed to do, is to go to God and say, God, how about it? Would you repent? Would you reverse it? And that's what God wants to do for every person in this room tonight. He wants you to be able to say, God, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. And those of us that stand behind pulpits and call ourselves preachers, we are here because God gave us grace. There is no need for anybody to boast or brag about who you are and what you've got going for you because all of us are saved by grace. And all of us need that touch of God. And when we are not really sure how we're going to make it, it's all right for you to go and say, God, could you help me through the night? Maybe you can even give me a gourd and protect me for a little while. And Lord, you've called me to go into this place and do this and that and something else. But I can't do it by myself. And then you've got to open up that heart of yours. Because if you're saved by grace, you've got to preach grace. If you know that you've tasted something called mercy, then you've got to make sure you're merciful. Because all of us need to know that we're sinners saved by grace, as the old song said. And we need to know that God is the one that walks with us and makes us and shapes us. Are you glad that you have a great church? Put your hand together if you thank God. You've got a great church. But we need to keep it a great church. Because whosoever will, let him come and take of the water of life freely. I know what happened to me when I went to church and got the Holy Ghost. Can I get a witness? Some of you remember what happened to you when he washed your sins away and you were baptized in Jesus' name. Some of you knew the new birthness that you experienced emotionally and physically when you began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gives the utterance. And that God is here tonight and his mercy is in this place. What a friend we have in Jesus. What a great opportunity. I know it's an old story, but let it be told again that we need to understand how precious God is. Yes, he can reverse the tide for you. He can change things. What a friend we have in Jesus. Stand with me, please. All our sins and griefs to bear. And what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. I don't know who you are, you that might be just suffering something and you think well what's going on in my life has been so bad I can never get it fixed that is a lie 
God can help you and God can fix it for you and God can turn it around and God can provide for you whatever need. Maybe it's some protection in a dark night like the, the prophet needed the gourd. He didn't understand it, but God was there anyway. He didn't really have it all figured out, but God was helping him nevertheless. But I need, I need a witness here tonight, a witness not just of one of two people. I don't know how many are in this room, but I need a witness from every one of us right now to raise your hands and thank God for repenting because sin is a death thing. It's, but isn't it good that God robed himself in flesh and he died on Calvary's hill? Oh, God, why don't you praise him with me now, Ron? Let's sing the song with me. Just lift your voice up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, we're going to pray for grace and mercy to sweep across this city. The sinners that have been in the deepest hole in the world still has got a right to come to church and be baptized. It don't matter. Lift it up, church. Lift it up. Let's see. Because we do not care. Everything. Take it to the Lord now. Take it to the Lord now. I'm going to pray now for families that have children that are outside of the church. I want voices to lift, be lifted up to help me pray this prayer because you don't know what might happen in your life. And if all your children are saved, you need to be very thankful of that. But you never know what your children may be facing down the road. This world is so wicked and perverse. Let's pray together right now. Jesus, we're asking you to touch our children. In the name of the Lord, we're asking you, God, that your mercy and grace fall upon us as it never has before. In this church, among ourselves, interacting together as, a, as families, let's reach out to you, God. Let your mercy come. Let your forgiveness come. Oh, Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. In the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord. Pray for the city of Indianapolis with me now. God, we're asking you to move in the city of Indianapolis. We can see it. The politicians know it. And the darkness is getting darker. And we know that the sin and the perversions and other things are becoming more and more noticeable in this Midwest, very conservative part of the world. And God, it's not only happening here, it's happening all around our nation and around the world. And there is a need for forgiveness and there's a need for your grace. God, would you just turn back a little time and give us another chance? Would you pray? Would you help us, God, as we pray for grace and mercy? Because we really want you to come and move into our lives and into our hearts. Walk with us, God, and help us. Let let it come. Hallelujah. Let it come. All of us are saved because of your grace. And God, we welcome whosoever will, regardless of what they've been through, regardless of how ugly their lives may have been. God, we know that you could put it all back together again. Oh, what a friend we have in Jesus. I, I think there's a good number of us here tonight Maybe people that have never been baptized, some that have never had the Holy Ghost, and a lot of us that are burdened down, and we're forgetting something, that God is merciful. Would you bring it to this altar? We have two to be baptized tonight, as I understand. If you're scheduled to be baptized, and we have, you don't have to be scheduled, we can baptize 100 people right behind me. We have two to be baptized, and I assume you've got them up there already. If there's anybody else that needs baptism, I'm going to ask you to come forward. I'm going to ask our members to come forward. 
And I'm going to ask you to pray for your family and pray for our city, pray for our church. You may not all be able to come, but let's gather around. 